Good morning, everybody. This is Robert from RJL518, welcoming you to Inside Pitch, another edition of the 1977 One and Gone Tournament. Today is game number 10, and it features my team, the number 22 New York Mets, who are 64 and 98, taking on the number 11 Minnesota Twins at 84 and 77, and we are at Metropolitan Stadium. Um, for those, I thought we get. I thought we were. I thought we would be tired of ballot boxes. So instead of ballots, how about some baseball? I think it's a great idea. It's gonna. I think uh, the Mets were awful. Uh, Nineteen seventy-seven, not a good year for the Mets. Uh, they were. They were one, one of the worst Mets teams in history. And of course, unfortunately, uh, the 1977 Mets are known mostly for the Midnight Massacre when the Mets traded uh, Tom Seaver to the Cincinnati Reds in the middle of the season, which still, even to this day, is a, uh, is a story of heartbreak for uh, Mets fans everywhere. The 1977 Minnesota Twins, pretty darn good team. They were 84 and 77, and they had a lot of talent. Including one, uh, including one great batter, and of course you know who that would be, and that would be Rod Carew. Forever Main ninety joins me here at Metropolitan Stadium for game number ten of the One and Gone tournament. As I thought, instead of ballots, I thought we'd have some baseball. So let's get back to baseball. As now election day has passed, and now it's in the hands of the of the powers that be. Let's get to some exciting baseball here. Starting pitcher for the 1977 Minnesota Twins will be Dave Goltz. You gotta love a guy with a, you gotta love a guy with a last name of Goltz. You really do. And he was excellent. 20 and 11, 3.36 ERA. Had a heck of a year for the Twins. I'm really not expecting much out of uh, out of the Mets today. But then again, they are at the American League ballpark, so that means the Mets get a DH. Should be interesting here. Split screen with CNN. Uh, I, yeah, I know it's amazing. It's amazing, but we're going to talk some baseball as the ballot boxes are pushed to the side right now. And we're going to get to what uh, some exciting, exciting, uh, some exciting horse side here action. So let's go. Let's play top of the first inning. I'll introduce the players as they come to the plate and leading off for the 1977 New York Mets will be third baseman Lenny Randall. Let's forget about ballots and let's play some baseball. First pitch coming. 6-3. Strikeout chance a 9. Metropolitan Stadium subtracts 1 from that. And Randall would be an 8. That is a 9. And that's not going to be a strikeout. So Randall gets the swing. That's a 2-3. And he leads off with a single past the first baseman. All right. Even though I am a Mets fan, I will play the teams like I usually do. Got to play them right. Randall will go to first. And that will bring up the second baseman, Felix Mion. Anything on Strat in eight? That is, uh, let's say, that's a, well, I'm going to re-roll that. And that is a 16, nothing happening. Infield halfway automatically. Goats will pitch. That is a 3-1. Possible home run check for me against the right handed batter. It's a 1-8. to eight. That's a 12. It's going to be too high. So Mion will swing 4-5. And he grounds one to second base. Double play rating 2. Three zero. The shortstop from Minnesota, which is a uh, Smalley, has an arm rating of plus one. So a one to four, they'll turn the double play, and they do. Neon grounds out into the four six three, and a rate and an automatic just like that erases the base runner. So we go straight to two outs, and the next batter will be the left fielder Steve Henderson. Steeler fan 1933 joins me at Metropolitan Stadium. Goltz with the pitch, 5-1. That is a blank. He's not tired. And again, my dice did not make the tower, so I will re-roll that. 5-5 five, five for Henderson, and he hits a double into center field. Wow, how big was that double play now? Second hit already off of Goltz. Mets get a man on second with two outs, and that will bring up the right fielder, Dave K King Kong Kingman. He had 26 home runs in 77 with the Mets. Two outs, Henderson on at second. Goats with the pitch, 6-3. That's a strikeout chance, and of course, Dave Kingman on a strikeout chance is not a good thing. That is a nine, and of course, Kingman will swing at nothing but air. 
and when in the inning, no runs for the Mets, two hits. And they get nothing out of a chance to maybe get some early runs in a game where they really got to get as many runs as possible against this Twins team. Bottom of the first inning coming up. And the pitcher for the 1977 New York Mets will be Jerry Kuzman. He was 8-20 and with a 3-4-9 ERA. Kuzman, that's not a bad year. 3.49 ERA is pretty darn good for 77. Problem was, they just couldn't get any run support. One of the reasons why that Mets team was just not good. As Philip Reynolds now joins me here at Metropolitan Stadium. As, was, as I said, we're forgetting about ballots and we're playing some baseball. Leading off for the Minnesota for the 77 Minnesota Twins will be the center fielder Lyman Bostock. Kuzman with the pitch, 2-2, two, two, strikeout chance of five, and he gets him. And he gets him. His right against the lefty, that is an eight minus one from Metro makes it a seven. That is a five, and he strikes out Bostock. One man down, that will bring up the shortstop, Roy Smalley. Just played an Apple game with Marino boards for several months and realized how much I hate those cards and how bad the system is compared to inside pitch and payoff pitch. Yeah. Although, would you believe I'm actually thinking of picking up a copy of Apple for just the 86 season? I might think of, I'm thinking about it just to play it out. 2-6 for King, for Kuzman. That's a strikeout chance, and that two is going to get Smalley. And Smalley goes down on strikes for the second out. And that will bring up that guy. First baseman, Rod Carew. Sports time machine says hello here at Metropolitan Stadium. Rod Carew. Um, he batted 388 in 1977. Um, if Sandy Koufax is the greatest Jewish pitcher or Jewish player in baseball history, Rod Carew was the best Jewish hitter in baseball history. And, of course, me being Jewish, I can say that. Carew the Jew, as I will say. Best Jewish hitter in baseball history, and one of the and maybe one of the top ten hitters in baseball history. Carew Carew rarely had a season under three hundred. He was that good. Kuzman with the pitch, that is a six two. That's a strikeout chance, and a nine against a lefty is going to be too high. Carew gets the swing, two two, and he of course gets a base hit. That's a single to left. Carew will go to first. That's my boy, Rod Carew. Runner on first base. The batter will bring up the Twins' designated hitter, and that is Glenn Adams. Anything on Strat? Let's see. That's a tough game for the Mets. That's a four. Uh, Rod Carew, definitely, uh, that would be a hit-and-run attempt, but they're not going to call it. How much hit chance on his card? Well, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There are 36 boxes on that in, in the matrix. And he's got almost half. And that, and that, of course, includes the possible head column. That's how good that card is. 5-5 five, five from Kuzma, and that's going to be against the lefty. That's a blank. Adams will swing 4-2. Starline 3, he grounds out the four. Browns out the second, and that will end it. The Twins do get a hit, but can't do anything with it. And at the end of one, we got no score. Rod Carew, greatest Jewish hitter in baseball history. Hank Greenberg, no, I'll take Rod Carew any day. I will take Rod Carew on that any day. Blank is really not good for a pitcher. It really isn't. Um, although, well, it, it depends. The thing about blanks, the pitcher doesn't have the a blank is pretty much a regular pitch. The pitcher delivers a, re a regular pitch and a, that the batter gets to swing. That's what a blank really means. The more blanks on your card, the kind of more average the pitcher is. We go to the top of the second. And leading off for the New York Mets will be their designated hitter. And I and I chose him Bruce Beauclair. He will be their DH for this game here at Metropolitan Stadium, top of the second. Colts with the pitch, 1-3, and that's a blank. Beauclair gets a swing, 4-4. Four, four. That's a hit column roll to left field. That is a 10, and that's going to be a triple for Beauclair. Lead-off triple for the Mets.
And that will bring up the catcher, John Stearns, one of the more underrated catchers in uh, in in Mets history, really. John Stearns. I mean, he was a fine catcher. I mean, he was he was on the team for he was on the Mets for a long time before, of course, the days of of uh, Gary Carter and uh, you know and and of course Mike Piazza. John Stearns, an underrated catcher. I mean, you know, it's underrated. I mean, he was good. I thought he was a good overall player. I'm sure you mentioned this. Why not Seaver? <laughs> Why not Seaver? Because Seaver is on is in the Reds is in the Reds is on the Reds team, not on the Mets. That is why Seaver's not pitching because Seaver's on the Reds is in the Reds pack for inside pitch, not the Mets. And inside pitch, okay, use uh, what Chris Davis does. He takes whatever the player the team ended the season with is where he puts them, unless of course. All right, it's almost 50-50. So Seaver's with the Reds, and he already pitched. So that's why um, that's why uh, it's got it's Kuzman. Runner on third for the Twins. Stern's the batter. They're gonna call the in. They're gonna call the infield in. Beauclair was a good runner. Anything first of all, anything on strike. That is a four, and that's nothing gonna be happening there. So Goltz will pitch 6 1. That's a blank. Stearns 4 4, and that's a fly ball to center field. Stearns' sacrifice fly rating is a 2. Does he automatically bring home Beauclair? A 3, he does not. Now we see what happens. Beauclair is a 4. The ball was hit to center. Bostock's arm is a minus 1. So a 1 to 3, Beauclair will score 4 to 5. He holds 6. He's, some, he's out. And that is a three. Beauclair will score on a sacrifice fly. As he will come in to score. And believe it or not, the Mets take a one nothing lead here in Minnesota. That will bring up the New York Playboy center fielder Lee Mazzilli, who every woman in New York pretty much at that time wanted his child. Goats with the pitch, 2-1. And against the switch hitter, that's a lefty. That is an automatic out. And that is going to be a ground out to third. Next up for the Mets, shortstop Doug Flynn. One of the guys the Mets traded for to get receiver. Midnight Massacre, got to love it. Goats pitch, 2-2. Possible error on a grounder. Flynn, 3-1. That's a star line, 6. That's going to be a fly out to center, so there'll be no error, and the inning is over. The Mets do get a run on a hit on a triple by Beauclair and take a one nothing lead here in Minnesota. Here comes Kuzman. Leading off for the Twins will be right fielder Larry Heisel. He is in right for this game. Kuzman's pitch, 1-1, one, one, walk plus 10, and Heisel will walk. His walk is a 15 against lefties. That's an automatic walk. Kuzman walks the leadoff batter. And that will bring up the catcher, Butch Weiniger, future Yankee, infield halfway. Anything on Strat? And that is a 7. Uh, Heisel's attempt is a 3. Nope, nothing happening. Kuzman will, will pitch. 2-6 strikeout chance and a 9 against the lefty is going to get Weiniger. 11 minus 1 is 10. That is a 9. Weiniger is out of there. That is Kuzman's third strikeout of the game. And the batter is third baseman Mike Cubbage. And that is a 9. Nothing happening on the strat roll. Infield still halfway. Forgetting about ballot boxes, we're playing baseball. 2-2 two, two for Kuzman. Strikeout chance, a 9, and he gets Gubbage. That's Kuzman's fourth strikeout of the game. Two down. Kuzman did have 192 strikeouts in 77. He, even though his record... Even though his record is 8-20, and 20, at that 3 4 9 ERA, Kuzman still didn't suck. Runner is still at first. We'll see what the strat roll says. A 14, nothing happening. Kuzman still did not suck. Kuzman's pitch, 1-4. That's a blank. Ford, 3-4, and that's a fly ball to right field. And that will be caught by, by King Kong Kingman. And the inning is over. Nothing there for the Twins except for a walk. 
and the Mets have a one nothing lead. The last American League, the last National League team to go play in an American League ballpark this year in my tournament was Atlanta going to Texas, and Texas crushed the Braves. So, top of the third inning coming up, Goltz will be there, and leading off for the Mets will be first baseman John Milner. One of the more meh players in, in Mets history. Gold's pitch, 4-5. Possible hit by pitch, uh, no chance with a 1. Milner will swing. He dumps out, He ducks out the way, takes a swing, 6-4. A hit column roll into center field. That is an 18, and that is going to be a fly out to center as it is, a, as it is above all the hits against the right-handed pitcher. Uh, triple is up to 15. That is an 18, so Milner gets a nice long fly ball, but it is an out. One man down, and the batter will be Lenny Randall. Colts with the pitch. 3-3. Three, three. That's a blank. Randall, 5-4. Single. Pass the shortstop for a base hit. Randall has his second hit of the game. He'll go to first. The batter will be Felix Mion, and field goes back to halfway. Anything on the strat? That is an 11, and nothing is six attempt. It would be an eight. Nope, nothing happening. Goltz will pitch to me on. And that is a 2-1. And against the righty, that's a walk chance. And a three is going to walk me on. Against the righty, that's a seven. That's a three. He walks me on. So Goltz right now having some issues. Runners at first and second, one out. And here is Steve Henderson, and he hit a home, and he hit a double his last time up. Infield still halfway. Anything on Strat? See if we make a call here. That's a two, and that's a possible. Let's see the Let's see. So six divided by two is a three. If Randall wants to steal third, let's see. Stolen base ratings a twelve. Golds minus two is a ten. Weiniger minus one is a nine. Nope. I'll call off the steal, and we'll we'll hit normally. Goltz, 4-4, strikeout chance. 15 is going to be too high. Henderson gets the swing. That is a 6-2, and that's going to be a base hit, a single past the shortstop. That's a hit for Henderson, and that's his second hit of the game. Randall on at second, an S6. He needs to be a three in order to score. His base running rating is a three. He will score Randall from second base. Mion's base running rating in order to get to third base on a single pass of shortstop needs to be a five. It is not. So Mion will hold at second. Henderson on at first. But the Mets now lead it two to nothing here in Metropolitan Stadium. And Twins fans are wondering what's going on. Henderson is two for two, and the batter now is King Kong. Still one out, infield still halfway. Goltz will sit, see if there's anything on Strat. And that is a 10, nothing happening. Goltz will pitch. That's a 6-5, a possible error on a throw. Kingman, one, two. Fly ball to left field, and that's going to get caught by Ford. And there's not going to be an error there. Mion, the left field cannot, on a second base, is not going to advance. So two outs. And now a chance for, Brew Bo for Bruce Beauclair. He hit a triple his last time up. Runners at first and second. Now two outs here. Anything on the strat? Mion, a four. Nothing happening there. Goltz will pitch. That is a 3-3. Three, three. That's a blank. Beauclair, 1-1. One, one. That's a hit column roll to left field. That's a two. It's a base hit. That is a single. A single to, single to, sec, single to left. A plus one for Mion to see if he can score. Three becomes a four. And the ball was hit to left field, and Ford's arm rating is a zero. A one to four. Mion will score from second. He does. Mion, and plus, plus the one here from a five, after one to five. Mion scores from second. 
And it's now 3 nothing. Henderson, in order to get to third, his base running rating is a four. And you keep the same, and you keep the same die roll. You keep the same die roll on a single on a single there. So it's minus on so first and third becomes minus two. So a four plus so it becomes a two plus one is a three. And Ford has no arm. He needs to be so a one to three, he gets the third. And he does not. So Henderson holds it second. Beauclair on it first. It's three nothing Mets. The Mets are getting runs in early here in Minnesota. Could we see a real first upset? The next batter is the catcher, John Stearns. They're going to go talk to Dave Goltz for a moment on the mound. Stearns flew out the last time up. Strat roll says a one. Uh, Henderson, a steal attempt is a possibility. 13 minus two is 11. Nothing with two outs. No, let Stearns hit. Goltz will pitch. And that is a 6-6. Six, six. That is a range play. Stearns, 2-6. That's a ground ball to short. The ball is hit to Smalley. His range is a 3. Does he make the play? Yes, he does. Smalley's got it. He'll throw to first and get the out. And that was a close one. Luckily, the infield was normal. That would not have been good. The Mets get two runs on three hits. We go to the bottom of the third. Mets leading. 3-0 here in Minnesota, surprisingly so far. Here comes Kuzman, bottom of the third. Leading off for the Twins will be second baseman Bobby Randall. Gets his first cuts here at Metro Stadium. Kuzman's pitch, 3-2, possible grounder error. Randall, 4-6. That's a single into right field. That's a base hit. The ball is hit to Kingman. His error rating is a 6. That's a 4, and it's going to be an error. Randall will make it Will make it to second on that play. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is on a, ground, on a grounder error. Yep, he boots the ball. Roll 1d6 versus advanced base runner. Oh, I got to roll a 1d6. So, Randall, I'm sorry, Randall's a 2. I got to roll a d6. So, Randall is a 2. The ball is hit to right field, which is Kingman. His, he has a plus 1 for an arm. So, a 1 to 3, Randall makes it to second, and he does anyway. So, it is an error, and Randall gets to second base. Big error on Kingman. So, that is a base hit and an E and an E9. First error on the Mets. Puts a man on at second. The batter will be Lyman Bostock. Anything on Strat? A five. Nothing happening. Kuzman will pitch. Five, four. Strikeout chance and 11 is going to be too high. Bostock will swing 3-2. That's a ground ball to second base. The throw will go to first, and Randall will automatically move to third base, and there's one out. Here is Roy Smalley. The, the, the Mets are going to play the infield back. They'll surrender the run to get the out. Up 3 nothing early. There's the pitch. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Strat roll. Uh, nine. Nothing happening. Kuzman will swing. Will pitch. One, two. That's a possible wild pitch. A 14 is not going to do it. So we re roll. That's a two, four. And against a right hander, that is an automatic out. Question is, what kind of out is it? It's a three. It's a ground ball to second base. It's a ground ball to second. The infield is normal. So the base running rating on Randall is a, becomes a four. In order to try to take the throw home, they would have to throw. It would be a one to four to try to get the runner out at home. They are not going to do that. They will take the throw to first. Smalley is out. Two outs. Randall will score. 
because I would have sent Randall anyway. So Randall does score. It's now three to one. Normally, you have as the offense, you have to choose to see if the runner goes, which I which I would normally have done on that play since the infield was back. So it's now three to one, but there are two outs. And here is Rod V. Rod Carew. Carew got a base hit his last time up. Kuzman with the pitch. 6-3. Strikeout chance. 18-2 high. Carew, 4-3. And this time he grounds out the third. The Twins do get one run on one hit and an error. At the end of three, the Mets are leading 3-1 to one here at Metropolitan Stadium. Like to remind you, tonight, payoff pitch returns. We got the New York Yankees versus the Boston Red Sox tonight on a game played on April 10th. So that's tonight's payoff pitch, 1985, Yankees and the Red Sox. It will be Ed Whitson versus Bruce Hurst. Top of the fourth, Lee Mazzilli will lead off for the Mets here. I was actually thinking, because I got the 85 season coming in from pay, from inside pitch, I was almost thinking of going back and forth between the two. But I'm, I'm actually on the fence about that. I might actually do that, but we'll see. Maybe I'll have an inside pitch and payoff pitch combination for the 85 season, since both, since both, uh, both game engines have that season available. Goats with the pitch. I don't think you guys have a problem with that. 6-4 is a blank. Mazzilli, 3-1, single, past the shortstop, a base hit. The Mets are getting hits. Mazzilli will go to first, and the batter will be Doug Flynn. Anything on Strat? A three. Mazzilli, he can steal if he wants. 12 minus 2 is a 10, minus 1 is a 9. Uh, no. No steal. I'll call it off, and I'll let Flynn back. Well, Flynn bats 197. Ugh. 197 hitter for the Mets that year. Ugh. All right. Um. Geez. No, I'll let Flynn hit. Goltz. 1-3. That's a blank. Doug Flynn. 3-6. That's going to be a star line one. That's going to be a ground out to second. Flynn's one double play rating one. Plus one is two. Let's... Minnesota shortstop Smalley plus one is a three. A one to three, they turn the double play, and they do. Doug Flynn grounds out into the four six three. Two men out. The batter will be John Milner. Goltz three six. That's a range play at the ballpark. Milner, 4-4. Four, four. That is a possible home run to the opposite field. That's a possible homer to the opposite field. First thing we got to do is see if Milner gets one. Against a right-hander, that's a 15 in order to do it. That is an 18. It is not a home run. Now it's a now we check. Now he's hitting to the opposite field. So John Milner being a lefty, that's hit the left field. Now we got to see if the play is made. If the play is made, the left fielder is is Dan Ford. His range is a two. If it's a one to two, he makes the cat. He makes the catch. Three or higher, it's a double. And it's a double for John Milner. As even though it was not a homer, but Dan Ford couldn't get over there. It's over his head. And that is going to be a double for Milner. That's how you resolve a range play on something like that off the ballpark. Another hit after a double play for the Mets. Mets could really be leading this game big time. But now it's up to Lenny Randall, and he's two for two. Anything on Strat? Six. Nothing happening. Colts lucky that ball didn't leave Metropolitan Stadium. Metro did have a hunt. There were 140 home runs hit in Metro in 77. Colts with the pitch. 3-6. That's, again, the same play. Another range play at the ballpark. 
and that is a 5-3, and that is a possible single in the center field. The ball was at the Bostock. His range is a four. Does he make the play? Yes, he does. Bostock will get there. He turns a single into an out, and the inning is over. And that just becomes a fly out to center field. No runs for the Mets. They did get two hits, but they still lead three to one here in Metro. The Mets surprisingly leading. Bottom of the fourth inning here is Kuzman. And leading off will be the twin DH. That's Glenn Adams. 6-3 on Kuzman's card. Strikeout chance. A four is going to get him. One out. Another strikeout for Kuzman. And that is his fifth. Larry Heisel will come up to bat. Kuzman, 5-3. Strikeout chance there. That's an eight. And he gets Heisel. Strikeout number six for Kuzman. And now Butch Weiniger. Kuzman pitches. That's a 3-5. That's a range play. Weiniger, 3-1. Starline, 3. That's a ground ball to second. Mian's, Mian's uh, range at second base is a 1. So you know, it's got to be a 1 for him to make the play. He does. He's got the one. Great play by Felix Mion. Dive for it. Makes a diving stab. Throws from his knees to get Weiniger out. Side retired. What a play by Felix Mion. A one, two, three inning. And it's still three to one Mets. Top of the fifth coming up. And speaking of Felix Mion, he's leading off. What a play. Dave Goltz looking in. Fans here, in Minnesota, fans here at Metro Stadium wondering what's going on. Goltz will pitch. That's a 5-2. Strikeout chance, 20, way too high. Mion rarely strikes out. 1-5. That's a fly out to center, though. Next batter is left fielder Steve Henderson. Henderson, two for two. Goltz, 5-3. That's at the ballpark. 6-2. And that is an automatic out. That's a star line four. And it's a ground ball to first. And now King Kong. Goltz. 2-5. That's a blank. Kingman, 4-6. And that is going to be a fly ball to right. And a 1-2-3 inning go the Mets. Halfway through this ball game, and the Mets are surprising the Twins 3-1. Question is, can they hold it? Mets still have The Twins still have an awesome lineup. The next game in the one-and-gone tournament, just to show you a little bit of the brackets, you see this is the game we're playing right here between the Mets and Minnesota. Game number 11 will be, will be tomorrow, and that will be the Detroit Tigers taking on the Kansas City Royals. Detroit beat Montreal in the first round. We now move on to the second round in this elimination tournament. So Detroit will take on Kansas City. I will have that game tomorrow afternoon. Nice American League matchup. Bottom of the fifth, Kuzman gets back on the mound for the Metropolitans. And here is Mike Cubbage leading off. Kuzman's pitch, 5-4. And that is a strikeout chance, and a six is going to get him. Against the lefty, Cubbage is a 17. He struck out badly against lefties. And that is a six, and he nails him. That is strikeout number seven for Kuz. Dan, Jerry Kuzman mowing down Twins batters. Here's Dan Ford. Kuzman's pitch, 5-4. Another strikeout chance, and a 5 is going to get Ford. And that's strikeout number 8. And now the batter is... Bobby Randall.
Randall singled and got on base with an error last time up. Kuzman with the pitch. That's a 1-5. Against the righty, that is a blank. Randall swings. 6-5. And that's a ground ball to first base. And that is another 1-2-3 inning for Kuzman. Five innings in the books. And the Mets are still leading 3-1. Top of the sixth coming up here at Metro Stadium. Goltz will pitch to Bruce Beauclair. And Beauclair is one for, is two for two, a triple and a single. Goltz with the pitch. That is a two three. That's a possible error. Beauclair, two six. Ground ball to second base. The ball is hit to Randall. His error rating is a four. That's a five. He'll make the play. Throw to first for out number one. Close. He actually did bobble it a little bit, but he did make the play. He makes the play. One out. And now John Stearns. Goltz with the pitch. Six, five. Possible error on a throw. Stearns. Six, five. And that's going to be a base hit. In the let in that is a single to let the pass the third baseman. That's a base hit for Stearns. Throwing errors only occur on runner advancement, so that error is negated. On an error on a throw to on a on a single on let well, actually, that's not true. Give me a moment. I think that's an in that's a single S5, so it's an infield single, so it is a possible throwing error. So it's hit the third base. And that is coverage. His error rating is an 11. That's a 4. It is going to be an error. My bad. I forgot. That was an infield hit. And Stearns is going to find himself on second base. It's an infield single. And tried to get him out. Cubbage tried to get him out at first. And he throws the ball away. So a base hit and an E and an E5. And that's the first error on the Twins. The Mets are in business with a man on second. The batter will be Lee Mazzilli. So each team has committed an error in this game. Mazzilli the batter, runner on second. Anything on strike? A 12. Nothing happening. Goats will pitch. That is a 3-2 strikeout chance. A 3 will get Mazzilli. And that is the second out. And now Doug Flynn. Runner on second. Can the Mets take advantage of it? Anything on strike? A 4. Uh... Mm, that would be nope, nothing happening. No hit and run with two outs. Goats will pitch. Six three. Strikeout chance. 15 too high. Flynn swings. Three four. And he pops out to pops out to short. And the error doesn't do any damage. No runs. They hit one error, but that's it. Still three to one Mets trying to hold on here against the twins. A much better team. But right now, Jerry Kuzman is pitching an absolute gorgeous game. It is the top of the order for the 77 Twin Cities. There's Lyman Bostock. Kuzman, 6-4. Range play. Bostock, 6-6. Six, six. Starline, 2. That's a ground ball to short. And that's it to Flynn. His range is a 3. He will not make the play. It'll get past him. That'll be a base hit. Yeah, let's trade Tom Seaver for Doug Flynn. Great, great. What a great idea. Leadoff runner gets the first base. The batter will be Roy Smalley. Infield halfway. Anything on strat? A four. Uh, two minus one is a three. Two minus one. Nope, nothing in. It beats the hit and run. No chance. Jerry Kuzman has a minus one hold rating. So that two attempt in Bostock becomes a one. And it needs to be a three for a hit and run. That doesn't call. So Kuzman does a good job keeping off, taking off a hit and run. So it'll be a normal pitch. 
That is a 6-6 six, six strikeout chance. 11 is going to get Smalley. 12 minus 1 becomes an 11, and he strikes out Smalley. That is strikeout number 9 for Kuzman. One out. Big strikeout. But now he'll have to face off against Rod Carew. Anything on Strat? A 17. Carew has an excellent bunt rating. And he can go ahead and bunt, but no, you're not bunting with a 388 hitter at the plate. So I'll call that off. Why would I have a hitter with a 388 average bunt? But then again, he had a great bunt rating. Bostock on it first. Infield halfway. Kuzman with the pitch. 2-3. Walk plus 10, and he's going to walk Carew. With a 5 on the red die, he walks Carew. And now the Twins are in business. And a chance for Glenn Adams. Anything on Strat? A 2. Uh, Bostock. You don't, do a hit and, you don't do a hit and run with runners at first and second, so no. Glenn Adams will go up against Kuzman now. Two, one out. Runners at first and second. This is a big pitch. Infield halfway by the Mets. Kuzman, two, three. That's a walk plus 10 as well. And he's going to walk Adams. And now the bases are loaded. And here is Larry Heisel. And the Mets are going to play for the double play and try to turn two. Bases juice for Heisel. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. Kuzman trying to see if he can get through this inning now, but he's walked two batters. Infield halfway. Anything on Strat? That's a 13. No. Kuzman's pitch. That's a 6-4. Range play. Oh, boy. That's not good. I don't think that's going to be good, but we'll see. Range play. Heisel. 1-4. He pops it up to short. He pops it up. And Flynn's range is a 3. It's popped up into, into shallow. It's really pop, it's a pop up to short. But his range is a 3, so it means it pretty much popped up into shallow. In, in the shallow left field. A one to three. Does he make the play? Yes, he does. He makes the catch. Two outs. Flynn comes through. Runners hold. Two down. And now Butch Weiniger with the bases loaded. Infield now goes back to normal. Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't make it. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry. He didn't make it. No, he did not make it. The infield is halfway. His range is removed, is lowered by two. I'm sorry. He doesn't make the play. My bad. My bad. My bad. Infield halfway. His range is lowered. It is a, it's going to drop for a hit because he was playing halfway in. Because that's a three. No, he doesn't make it. My bad. That is a hit. That is a hit. And that goes as, as a pop-out, that becomes a single six. My bad. No. Got to play it right. Bostock will score. Carew from second base. His base running rating is a four. From second to home on a single six, he needs a three. He will score because the bases were, since the base is loaded, he comes in to score. Glenn Adams. On a one, he will not make it to third. I already know that. So he stows it. He says it's second base. So Larry Heisel hits a bloop single over. He hits a bloop single over Flynn's head. He can't make the play because the infield was halfway. We are tied at three. I'm glad I caught that. No, that's not an out. That is a hit. That is a base hit. Now Weiniger can come up to bat with runners at first and second and two outs, and we're tied at three. 
What a play by Larry Heisel. A hit by Larry Heisel just blooped it over Doug Flynn's, Doug Flynn's head. But the infield halfway. I still had the infield halfway. They were playing for the, was playing for the double play. It was one out, not two. Still one out. Runners at first and second. The infield will be halfway again. Oh, boy, that hurt. I'm glad I caught that. That's a three. Glenn Adams not running anywhere. Kuzman will pitch. 3-3. Three, three. That's a double question mark against a righty. A 1-3 to three will be a star line. That's a 20. That's too high. Weiniger gets the swing. And that's a 2-2. Two, two, and he's going to fly out the left. Glad I caught that. Got to play it right. As much as I'm rooting for my Mets here, I got to play it right. Here's Mike Cubbage. Two outs now. Anything on Strat? A one. Uh, no hit and run. Not with two outs. Kuzman will pitch. Four, five. That's a strikeout chance, and a six will get Cubbage. And that is Kuzman's tenth strikeout of the game. But the damage is done. Two runs for the Twins. Two hits and a couple of walks. At the end of six, we are tied at three. And Kuzman can't believe it as he goes over to Doug Flynn and says, why, man? You know what? He's, go he go he's actually going over to Flynn and saying, man, should have kept you at Cincinnati, man. Seaver should still be here. You stink. You should have made that play. It's exactly what Kuzman's telling him. We go to the top of the seventh. Yeah, you would have liked that too. Yep, that's the thing. I got to remember. I got to play the game right because of the pop-up. Exactly. Top of the seventh inning, Dave Goltz has pitched usually the 32 batters. Let's see here. Seven, eight, nine. Uh, uh. He still has a few. He's not tired yet. They're going to keep him in there. And leading off for the Mets is going to be John Milner. Top of the seventh inning. Goltz with the pitch. 6-3. Strikeout chance. A two will get him. One out. Here's Lenny Randall. Remember tonight, we got the New York Yankees taking on the Boston Red Sox payoff pitch, 1985. So for any of you Yankee and Red Sox fans, be there or be square. 6-2 for Dave Goltz. And against the switch hitter, that's a against the switch hitter, that is going to be a left-handed switch hitter, and that's going to be a blank. Randall will swing, 1-4, and he singles past the pitcher. Randall has a base hit. And that's his third hit of the game. He goes to first and brings up Felix Mion. Infield halfway. Still doing strat. And that is a three. Uh, Randall, six. Twelve minus two. No, nine. I can't run with a zero. With a 45% chance to steal second, no. Randall will stay at first and Mion will bat. Goltz. 4-6. That's a walk plus 10, and that makes that a 17 and a 15. He will walk Milan. So now Boltz gets in a little bit of trouble here. Runners at first and second. And only one out. And here's Steve Henderson. Can New York get back and take the lead here at Metropolitan Stadium? Henderson having a good game. He's two for three. Infield still staying halfway. 12, nothing happening. Goltz will pitch to Henderson. That's a 2-1. And against the righty, that's a walk chance. And his walk is a 15. And an 18, he does not walk. But Henderson gets the swing. That's a 4-4. Star line 6. It's a fly out to center. And now two down. Infield goes back to normal. And now can King Kong Kingman come through with a hit? Anything on the strat? 12, nothing. 
Goltz will pitch. 4-5. Hit by pitch. Uh, 11 minus 7 is a 4. 10 too high. So, nope. Kingman will swing. 2-3. Base hit. Single. Past the shortstop. It's a single. Kingman comes through. Randall. Base run rating of a 3. Plus, plus 2 outs is a 4. He needs to be a 3, and he will score from second. The Mets retake the lead. Mion's base running rating is a 3. Needs to be a 5 in order to get to third. It is not, so he will hold it second. Kingman's at first, but Kingman gets a big clutch. RBI single. The Mets retake the lead 4-3. to three. And the batter is Beauclair with runners at first and second and two outs. Stadium groans. Ugh. Goal. A six on the strat die. Nothing happening. Goltz will pitch to Beauclair. That's a 3-4. That's at the ballpark. Beauclair, 4-3. And that is a star line five, and it's a fly ball to left. And the inning is done. The Mets do get one run on two hits and a walk. Seventh inning stretch. Mets leading four to three here in Minnesota. Bottom of the seventh inning. Kuzman has four batters to go before he gets tired. Leading off for the Twins is going to be Dan Ford in the bottom of the seventh. Kuzman will pitch. That is a 1-2. Wild pitch disregarded. Reroll. Fouled away. 1-2 again. Fouled away. Strike two. 2-4 two, against a right-hander. That is an automatic star line. And that is going to be a fly ball to a fly out the right. One down. Here is Bobby Randall. Kuzman, 4-4, four, four, hit by pitch. A 15 on for Bobby Randall. That's a five, and he plunked him. Ugh. And Bobby Randall gets plunked, and he puts the go the tying run on base on a hit batter. Even though Kuzman has no hit by pitch rating, but a 15, Randall gets plunked, and now the tying run on first base. And now we the top of the order for Minnesota. Here's Lyman Bostock. Infield now halfway. Anything on Strat. That is a 16. Nothing happening. Have I ever talked with Joe about a possible 2000 season release? Joe says, ideally, he wants to do every season. I told him 2000 would be a great season, but I'll be honest. Um, I, I mean, he says 1972 is probably going to be next. 63 was was, was talked about. Um, 61 was talked about. Um, I mentioned 2001 would be a great season to do. How would you love to play the 2001 Mariners? The best regular season team in history. Never to win a championship. Best regular season team ever. 116 wins. Can't win a title. That 2001 Mariners team was unbelievable. And couldn't win anything. As the Yankees knocked them out. Anything on Strat? That is a four. Nothing happening. Kuzman will pitch to Bostock. Infield halfway. 6-3, strikeout chance, 6, got him. He gets Bostock on a strikeout. Big K, two outs, infield goes back to normal. And now Roy Smalley. He wants to do every season. He's averaging about, about maybe seven to seven or eight seasons per year. If he does that, he'll have every, he'll, like, he'll be like Appa. He'll have every season in about, 15 years. Of course, including the, the previous year's season as well. 2020, 2021, 2022, you know, all that. Kuzman. Let's see. 20. Possible pickoff. 
Kuzman, 13, and it's a pickoff error. Bobby Randall will go to second. Kuzman tried to get him at first, and he threw the ball away. Randall goes to second. The tying run has now moved to the scoring position on a pickoff error by Guzman. That's a 13, and that is what that is there. We'll re-roll Strat again. That's an 11, nothing happening. 2000 Mets versus Yankees World Series and White Sox had a great season too. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Two outs. Guzman will pitch. Two, six. Strikeout chance. Three. Got him there on strikeout. Side retired. Kuzman with 12 strikeouts in this game. No runs, a hit batter. And that is it. At the end of seven, Mets still lead four to three. As Kuzman, 12 strikeouts in this ball game. He is in a zone. Top of the eighth coming up. 4-3 lead for the Mets. Gold still the pitcher. And he... He is tired. You got a right, a switch, and a right. I think we may see... The question is, do I want to go to the bullpen? Let me see what the Twins want to do. Check the pen. I am not impressed with the Minnesota Twins bullpen. I'm going to keep Goltz out there. Goltz is going to stay out there. I'll have to rep I'll have to replace him if he hits if one of these uh, parentheses come up now. John Stearns will bat for the Mets. He got a base hit his last time up. Top of the eighth. Goltz will pitch. Five one, and that's exactly what comes up. It's a base hit on Dave Goltz. That is a single because Goltz was tired. That does come up, and now Goltz has to come out. So Stearns will be at first. Now we have Lee Mazzilli leading off, a switch hitter. We've got a switch right, left. And the Twins are going to go ahead and bring in their best pitcher. And they're going to bring in Tom Johnson. He was their closer. He had 15 saves, 16 wins, though. Tom Johnson will now pitch for the Twins as Goltz is done. Stern's on at first. Seven seasons a year, I believe, only released 1986 this year, right? No, this year, I think he really, because of, due to COVID, he really had to slow down this year. This was a rough year for, well, Everybody here in America. So we slowed down. He released 86, 1921 this year, and I think a couple of other seasons earlier. I think 80. There were a couple of other seasons he released this year, too. I'm not sure because I wasn't doing this stuff early this year. I didn't start doing this, uh, this kind of thing until, well, June or July. And I sometimes think if I was still working, everything was normal. I don't think I would be doing this. I don't know. Stern's on at first. Leave Mazzilli at the plate. Let's see if anything on Strat. 11. Nothing happening. So now Tom Johnson will pitch to Mazzilli. Infield is half. Johnson, 2-1. Strikeout chance. 18 too high. Mazzilli, 5-2. Fly out the left. One man down. The batter will be Doug Flynn. And I'm wondering if taking him out might be a good idea. But let me look at the bench. It is the eighth inning. I can make some moves. Uh, yes, we're gonna see a we're gonna see a pinch hitter here. And coming on to pinch hit for Flynn as he comes out is going to be Ed Cranepool. He will pinch hit against Johnson. Bud Harrelson will take over at shortstop. Much better uh, shortstop than Flynn. 
So Harrelson will take over. But Ed Cranepool will pinch it against Tom Johnson. One out. Anything on strat? A six. Nothing happening. Johnson will pitch to Cranepool. That's a 5-4. And that's at the ballpark. 5-4. And that is going to be a single in the left field. That's a base hit. Stearns, two. Uh, to get to... Uh, yeah. To get from first to third, two minus two is a zero. And left field is four. He has no arm rating. There is no way Stearns can get to third. It's an automatic hold. And he'll stay at second base. But a base hit for Crane Pool. Thanks to the ballpark. And now John Milner. Runners at first and second. Met serving business now. Anything on Strat? A four. Uh, John Stearns, 11. Wow, Stearns, okay, two plus. So a possible hit and run, but no, not with runners at first and second. So runners, so let's see what Tom Johnson has for John Milner. Four to three Mets, top of the eighth here at Metro Stadium. The Metropolitans are doing it at Metropolitan Stadium. Johnson with the pitch. That's a 4-4. Four, four. That's a walk plus 10. And against a righty, that is a walk easily. That's a 16. And that becomes a 26. And the bases are loaded. And now, here's Lenny Randall. Randall is 3 for 4 today. Tom Johnson, and Randall's a switch hitter, so it doesn't matter. And Randall had a very good season in 77. He batted 304. I'm not surprised he's 3 for 4 in this game. His double play rating is a 3. Johnson adds 1 to that. It would be a 1 to 5 for a double play. Pretty much, depending on the pivot guy, it could be a 6 if it's hit to Smalley. Or if it's, hit, it's going to be a double play either way. If it's ground, if it's a ground out without an error, it's going to be a double play either way because both the shortstop and the second baseman for the Twins have a plus one pivot. The Twins are going to play for the halfway and try to turn two. They pretty much will if they they pretty much will. Johnson five five. That's a wild pitch. It's a five. It is a wild pitch. The Mets get a run. Johnson throws the ball to the backstop. Stern scores. Runners advance. The double play is now taken out, and the Mets now lead it five to three. And they and the stadium groans. Ugh. Runners at second and third now. Now the double play is taken out. And they're going to intentionally put Lenny Randall on base and pitch to Felix Mion. A good chance in a double play to still get out of the inning. But they will intentionally put Randall on on a walk. Base is loaded again. One out. And now Felix Mion, the batter. Need to. Twins trying to turn two. Johnson. He can pitch to nine batters before being tired. He's not tired yet, but Johnson right now not getting, not doing the job. He's given up two base hits and two walks. Jo anything on Strat? I'll still check. That's a four. Uh, nothing happening. Johnson pitches to me on. That's a 2-4. It's a strikeout chance. A 6 is going to be too high. Mion rarely struck out. Mion swings. 3-4. And that is going to be a fly ball to center field. His sacrifice fly rating is a 2. Does he bring in Crane Pool? Yes, he does. Two outs, but it's automatically a, a sacrifice fly. And Crane Pool will come in to score. 
And the Mets now lead it 6-3 to three on the Twins. And the batter now was Steve Henderson. Two outs now, infield back to normal. Strat roll. There's a 19. Henderson not going to do anything. Runners at first and second. Mets look like they could upset this game. Milner second. Randall first. Johnson's pitch. That's a 3-6. A walk plus 10. And against that makes Anderson a 25. And again, the bases are loaded. He walks Henderson, and the bases are loaded for King Kong. Now, Kingman had 26 home runs in 1977. Two outs. Kingman can blow this game wide open, even though it's a 6-3 game, and now the strat roll is taken off. Johnson will pitch. 4-2. Strikeout possibility. A 17. That's an 18. Kingman does not strike out. He will get to hit. 3-2. And he pops out the third. But the Mets get two runs on two hits and two and three walks. We go to the bottom of the eight. The Mets are three outs away from upsetting the Twins. And they lead six to three. Jerry Kuzman has reached his fatigue rating. They're going to keep him out there. Until he gets a give now with a three run lead, Kuzman actually has a little bit of room. Of course, he'll have to deal with Rod Carew to lead off the bottom of the eighth for the Twins. Kuzman will pitch. Pitch from Kuzman. That's a four six strikeout chance. Nineteen too high. Carew will get the swing. 6-4. And he grounds out to second. After a leadoff base hit by Carew, Carew has walked and grounded out twice. One out. Here's Glenn Adams. Kuzman. 2-6. Strikeout chance. Six. Got him. He gets Adams. Let me just double check my strikeouts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is Kuzman's 13th strikeout. Two down. And now Butch Weiniger. I'm not Kevin Cash. I'm not taking Kuzman out unless I have to. Weine Kuzman, one, two. Wild pitch disregarded. Fouled away. Five, one. Possible error. Weiniger, 6-5. That's a star line six. It's a fly ball to right field. It's hit to Kingman. His error rating is a six. That's a 10. He's not going to have a problem with that one. And he puts it away. And the inning is over. Nothing across for the Twins. At the end of eight, the Mets have a three-run lead. We go to the top of the ninth. All nine batters came to the Mets. Tom Johnson is now considered tired. And Bruce Beauclair is a leadoff batter. And the Twins got to keep it where it's at. So I think we might be seeing a new pitcher for the Twins. 
and it'll be their best overall that's remaining in the bullpen, which is not – I can see why the Twins were 84 wins. Their bullpen was not good. Let's see, 509. The next best pitcher for the Twins is going to be right-hander Gary Serum. Gary Serum will come in to pitch for the Twins. He'll go up against Beauclair in the top of the ninth inning. Best remaining pitcher in the bullpen. Beauclair having a good day. He's two for four with a triple. Serum with the pitch. That's a 2-2. Possible error on a throw. Beauclair, 3-4. That's a fly ball to right. No error there. One out. Here is John Stearns. Stearns having a good game as well. He's two for four. Serum with the pitch. Six, four. That's a blank. Stearns, one, four. Ground ball right back to Serum. He'll throw to first. Two down. And now Lee Mazzilli. 5-4, Serum's card. Possible home run check against the switch hitter. Against the switch hitter, which would be a lefty. That is a 1-12. to That passes. That passes a home run check with an 8. Mazzilli against the righty is a 6. No adjustment from Metropolitan. From Metropolitan Stadium. A 1-6, to Mazzilli hits this out. Nope. But he does get to hit. It's a blank. So now it's a 4-6, and he grounds out the third. The Mets are three outs away from pulling off pretty much the upset of the, of the first round. We go to the bottom of the ninth, 6-3 to three Mets. Jerry Kuzman will probably try to get the complete game if I can get him out there. He is facing the lower part of the batting of the lineup for the Twins. Larry Heisel will lead off. And if the Mets do pull this off and win this game, they will be playing. They will be, if they win this game, the next opponent for them would be the Boston Red Sox. Because they go to Fenway to play Boston. Because Boston is waiting in the next bracket. Jerry Kuzman trying to get the complete game. He is tired, but not taken out yet. Mets do have the bullpen ready. Kuzman will pitch to Heisel. That's a 4-4. Hit by pitch. 20 is going to be too high. Heisel will swing. 2-5. Fly ball to center field. I'm sorry, not Heisel. Not Heisel. My bad. Weiniger. Weiniger was the next batter. My bad. Weiniger is the next batter. I'll keep it going. 2-5. And that is a star line four, and it's a ground ball to short. Weiniger was the next batter. Doesn't matter. It's still out. I kept the roll as it is, and that's what would have been. One man down. The batter now is Mike Cubbage. Cubbage bats 264. They're going to leave him in there. Although I will check the bench real quick. See if the Twins got anything. I really don't think so. No, not really. Not really. No, the bench. Cubbage is higher than the bench. So Cubbage will bat. One out. Defensive upgrade. Uh, I already made one by putting Harrelson out there. I usually don't do defensive upgrades. I usually don't. I could, but... Kuzman will pitch the Cubbage. It's all on the Kuz. 2-6. Strikeout chance. 17. Missed it. 17 here, but minus one from Metro makes it a 16. Cubbage will not strike out because of Metro. He will swing. 2-2, two -two, and he flies out the right. 
two outs. And the next batter will be Dan Ford, and he will bat with a 267 average. Twins fans at Metropolitan Stadium can't believe this. The Mets are about to probably make the upset of the, of the round. At least I'm pretty sure they're going to be the next high, they're going to be the lowest seed to go in. And the answer is no. Yeah, the Mets are ranked number 20 or 22. The Milwaukee Brewers were 21. San Diego was a 20. Nope, I'm wrong. Oakland had the lowest seed. They were 24. The Oakland Athletics beat the Chicago White Sox. So, no, this would not be the upset of the round, but it would be, in my opinion, because I didn't think the Mets would match up well against the Twins. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Mets leading 6 3. Kuzman with the pitch. 3 4. Against the righty, that's a home run check. And against the lefty of 14, that's a one crack. And Dan Ford hits one high, hits one deep, and hits it gone. A solo home run for Dan Ford off of Kuzman. With two outs, Dan Ford does get the homer off the lefty with a 14. And it's now six to four. The game is not over yet, and the batter now is Bobby Randall. Now the Mets might think of a pinch of new pitcher. I really want Kuzma to finish this game out, but not sure it's going to happen. So let me look at the. Let me look at the pitchers and see what I want to do with the Mets. You need one out. Mets need one out. Randall at the plate. And they're going to bring, and that's going to, uh, do I want to take Kuzman out? One more batter, but Skip Lockwood is ready to go. He allows one more base runner. Lockwood comes in. Two outs. Kuzman's going to pitch to Randall. Out. And Randall being a switch hitter, they'll let him bat against Kuzman. Six to four now, Mets. Two outs. Kuzman will pitch. That's a one four. It's a blank. Randall, five three. That's a popped it up. Popped it up to first base. Milner is getting under it. Pats his glove twice. Puts it out. Block. And the ball game is done. The New York Mets upset the Minnesota Twins. Jerry Kuzman goes the distance. 13 strikeouts. And I'm going to make him the player of the game against this Twins lineup. Mets win. The Mets win the ball game. The Mets win the ball game. As Bob Murphy would say. We got a happy re we got a happy recap for my Mets. I'll give you guys a line score in a second. They did get one run on one hit. For the New York Mets, six runs on 13 hits and one error. For the Minnesota Twins, four runs, five hits, and one error. Jerry Kuzman goes the distance, gets a complete game, 13 strikeouts. Dave Goltz took the loss. And that will do it. The New York Mets advance to the second round. They will play the Boston Red Sox in Fenway Park. And who knows how that game's going to go. That should be fun. But of course, Kuzman can't pitch that one. It's going to be the next. It's going to be the next pitcher, while the Red Sox will have their ace. 
Anyway, what a great win for my Mets. Something for me to celebrate about so far. Instead of ballots, we had baseball. And we'll have more baseball later. The New York Yankees take on the Boston Red Sox tonight in the 85 payoff pitch season. Be there or be square. Anyway, Steeler fan, 1933, forever remain 90, sports time machine. Philip Reynolds, thank you all for joining me here at Metropolitan Stadium. And we'll see you guys a little later. Stay safe, healthy, smart, and strong. Take care, everyone. Mets. Beat the Twins 6-4. to four. The Minnesota Twins are one and gone. We'll see you guys later.